Who wrote Ruby Tuesday by the Rolling Stones? Sometimes a cover is necessary to reveal a song's full depths. The Italian-inspired rendition of Ruby Tuesday by Franco Battiato is stunning. He creates a Baroque opera of heartache from the Rolling Stones hit. However, a joyous chorus prevented what was actually planned from happening. Keith Richards, after all, isn't exactly the kind to readily show his sensitive side. But Richards' terrible despair is where the song is coming from. The initial somber chords proclaim this, and the chorus exuberance makes it apparent that you can't keep him down for very long. According to what he can remember of the book according to the Rolling Stones, Linda Keith wasn't present when it was likely written, laughs. She must have been angry somewhere, I don't know. Tuesday, and it was a really gloomy, gloomy, gloomy ruby, Tuesday. After becoming well-known as a fashion model, Linda Keith was a significant role in the counterculture movement. Keith is remembered as being the first person to inform Chaz Chandler about Jimi Hendrix, demonstrating her strong eye for talent and her frequent attendance at venues in Greenwich Village. He believed what she said, went to see the little-known virtuoso perform, and the rest is, as they say, history. She was cruelly taken advantage of by the trappings of the free age, though. She gradually became increasingly drug-dependent and started to spiral downward in the middle of the 1960s. The goodbye in this song is actually rather literal. Sincerely, Richards was unable to locate her. So he got in touch with her dad, British radio DJ and actor Alan Keith. Even though he didn't like her work, her father decided to go to New York with her in an effort to support her and get her out of the trouble that seemed to surround her way of life. Richards claims he sought to make the song as inclusive as possible, despite the song's very specialized subject matter. He remarked, that's one of those things some chick you've broken up with, in reference to the song. And the only things you still have are a pair of underwear, a guitar, and a piano. And it's farewell, you understand. It naturally follows from there. And after that, simply keep building on it. Because you're genuinely in the moment and you kind of mean it, it's one of those songs that is simplest to create. For a songwriter, breaking his heart will inspire him to write a good song. The song is without a doubt one of the Rolling Stones' best from between the buttons, even if you might not think of Richards as much of a heartbroken writer type. With a wide range of instruments, complementing Richards' straightforward farewell, the song exemplified the Baroque pop of the era.